Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by 10th Man in G+, together with a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good Monday morning to all. Good morning. Thanks, Nate. Good morning. Good to have you all. Any signs of a physical sphere edge horizon, formerly known as Earth Curve? Impossible. It's a thought experiment. No. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth based variety? You enthusiastic lot? Uh, we'd feel it. We'd know it if there was. No. Yeah, no, you'd, go, no. you'd go flying off, wouldn't you, like a roundabout? Now you give us these affirmations, Vacuum, and you're a glober. <laughs> I never said I was a glober. You're not. What? What? He said he wants to get back to his roots. <laughs> Hello. Hey, are hey, we? Are we? Are we? You talk like a baller, though. What? How does like a baller talk? Like you. Oh, from Yorkshire? From Yorkshire, is he? Not, not the accent, no. The disingenuous nature of most of how you approach things. See, Neil keeps saying I'm disingenuous. Don't you, don't you start, Nate. Good word. It's an accurate description of you. You, you sound says, disingenuous. Says you. Says you. <laughs> Let's move on. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Nope. Come on. Come it's on, Arwen. Um, it's behind the clouds. Some guy from NASA. Bob from NASA, I believe. That's Venus. But yeah, they use Kepler's uh, third law thereafter to extrapolate the distance of the sun. You're right. But yeah, Bob Bob from JPL says, yeah, yeah, that ping return based on the time frame with the R value and the distances that gives us, that's the return signal, exactly the timing we expected based on the heliocentric R assumption. Bob from JPL, wouldn't you know? Wow. I didn't know that. You don't know that? You've, had, you've been here every single time Anthony Riley's gone through the story <laughs> of Bob from JPL going over to Jodrell Bank. Okay. Well, I must have fallen asleep every single time. <laughs> <laughs> what insult. <laughs> the, the ping. The ping. The Arwen falls asleep to pings. <laughs> Any evidence of a self self perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No, if it doesn't have the other things of the housekeeping questions, it doesn't have that for sure. Yeah, that's all of that, I think. How about the movie core? Plenty of drawings. The movie that's the nice. core. Well, it's just a movie. You made that joke last week. Someone did that. Don't let. Don't get away with that, mate. Get away with what? That joke's been made a few times. I've been listening, and I don't listen every day. What joke? About the core, the movie, the core. Someone's made that before. Yeah, so? Not so much a joke yeah, or a, a suggestion of the brainwashing people undergo. Yeah, but you acted like it was like it was really original. It is. Now shut up. <laughs> 
straight. Let, let me get it straight. <laughs> I tried to, to join. I tried to join your show, Arwin. I couldn't get on your show. You're complaining about us repeating the same joke. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't get on your <laughs> show before. A thousand mate. times. Okay, you try and not repeat the same joke at least twice. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's an outrage. We're told that was a South. Yeah, the movie is a fucking outrage. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. The movie is an outrage. You're right. No, the idea of having a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth is an outrage. Oh, oh I thought you meant the film, which no. would be right. The film is just, and I said this already, you just ignored me. It's just an example of the brainwashing people undergo to have this idea, this notion in their brain. Hence, it's not a joke. What, it's you not think like the core, the, the film, the core is brainwashing? Yeah, we don't have a, third time. We don't have a molten iron core. It's a preposterous <laughs> assertion. <clears throat> but yet there's films out there that leave people with the impression and idea, like the core, that we have a molten iron core. The clues in the title of the movie, it's very relevant, not a joke. An outrage. Okay, I get you. Perfect. Moving on. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Uh, no. No such thing. Nope, nope. There's a film. <laughs> there is a film. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just trying to be a bit topical, you know. That joke's not going over here, I'm afraid. It, it wasn't a joke. I was just pointing out some more blame washing. I know. It was, that was the irony lineup. You, at least you bit. <laughs> For my punchline to not <laughs> fail. No, I, I think I was being a bit ironic too, Nate. I led you briefly. Maybe. Moving on. <laughs> any any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? I'm just I'm just googling IMDb now, Nate. So we're on to another question, and you're still on the other one. It's okay. No, no, I'm not. No, feel free. That was, a, that was another joke. Sorry. Maybe by Friday you'll get your groove. No, I, I've got to go back home Friday. I can't. I don't think I can make. I might be able if to I make don't Arwen get stuck short in the details. Oh my gosh! No wonder you can't tell jokes. <laughs> right, moving on. Any, it was, any it was almost. It wasn't as good as Nate's joke about epilepsy the other day, though. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, <laughs> cosmology, or astrophysics? It's, it's a joke, Nathan. Let's move on. No? Nobody in the East Discord panel? Anybody? Um, Dr. Becky's still working on something. On her emails? Yeah. Who's Dr. Becky? YouTuber. The, the, ba the ballers are less enthusiastic to answer any of these housekeeping questions. Any evidence that we can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon, given that a huge chunk of the Western world are under the misapprehension that the sky is an available volume for the gas we're breathing to fill. That would be a vacuum. Any evidence that you can have that gas pressure that we breathe without containment that is required for gas pressure? No, none whatsoever. In fact, the opposite is true. You can't have a vacuum next to any kind of gas pressure without some kind of membrane. I think that was a bit dishonest, though, wasn't it, Nathan? Because the higher you, you can't breathe, the higher you go. And who mentioned breathing? I said the gas we breathe, you, as in. You said available volume. Yeah. So, sorry, I think I've misunderstood you again, Nathan. Please explain what you said. To have gas pressure, we require containment. But you said something about the air we breathe. Yeah, we're breathing air. Well, the further you go up, you can't breathe, can you? No, that's right. It gets thinner as you go up. There's less being produced. And we still yeah, breathe air. It's interesting, that, isn't it? Very interesting. Doesn't mean the sky is a vacuum, though, does it? No, but it sort of approaches a vacuum the higher no. you go. It's it weird, that. in any way, shape or form, approach a vacuum. That would be a violation of natural law. But it's sort of get, it's getting there, though, isn't it? It's no, on the it's way not. to being a vacuum. No. It's weird, that, isn't it? No, it's not getting there. No. 
Str- gets less, streams less or air up, up high. Stream. Because we have a dynamic system. But in order to achieve that dynamic system, we first must have containment to form pressure. Yeah, no, I to know. To then have gradients form. But it's just weird the way it does that. That's fascinating. It doesn't prove the sky is a vacuum. DOS, second time. No, I know. But it's just I'm just saying it's strange the way it approaches a vacuum as you it doesn't. go higher. I've just said this second time. No, it doesn't. What's your point, vacuum? Okay. It doesn't I'm approach not, a I vacuum. I don't know. I'm just, it's just interesting to me that. Don't have a point. Well, I do. The sky is not a vacuum. If it was, all the air we're breathing would fill it and we'd all be dead. Yeah, Precisely. yeah. So it's definitely not a vacuum. Fascinating, though, gas pressure gradients are. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. Really fascinating. Prove nothing. Definitely don't affirm that there's a sky vacuum above us, not sucking out all the gas we're breathing, which was my point. You claimed it was dishonest. Not really. Just natural No, I was just, I, yeah, I was just hinting it dishonesty. I think I think I misunderstood what... All right. Yeah, you definitely misunderstood. You definitely did not understand this natural law. Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. Good, excellent. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius. Black swan. Hey, chocolate. <laughs> uh, I get a I good get a morning, guys. From Eratosthenes. Fill us in. He's dead. All right, I'm gonna read. Um... <laughs> so... He's dead. <laughs> oh what? my god. Like, that's okay. Calm down, guy. Whoever is in Discord, unbelievable predictions. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so this is this is what he's saying. Uh, based on the fact that sun rays shine um, straight down well in Sween, but will never shine straight down here in Alexandria, we use formula of math to measure the size of this globe where, um, where we live. How close my measurements reveals true size of our world, we may never know for sure. But we can trust the method for measuring circles Euclides taught to discover the ground truth. Gaia globe that sustains our conscious life is 250,000 stadia round. Now that we know the true measurement of our globe, uh, where humans build cities on fertile plains. Okay. Wow. So we all understand that when he, in the first statement, states that how he's going to use mathematics to measure the globe... We all appreciate that by declaration, he's begging the question. I'm assuming the world is a globe. Now let's measure it. It fits, though, well, doesn't yep. it? Yep. Sorry, it's called a begging the question fallacy. He's not proving Earth's sphericity. He's assuming it by declaration. Earth is sphere. Let's measure the sphere, I assume. That's what that statement says. Telling me, oh, well, that's OK. I assume sphericity, too. No, not okay. Just a begging the question fallacy. Fallacious reasoning. Assuming that which you're trying to prove is your outcome. Not by measuring it, not by actually measuring sphericity, but by assuming it. It fits though, don't it? Yeah, that's the second time you've said that. It's a logical fallacy. It doesn't actually demonstrate sphericity. It doesn't actually measure sphericity. It assumes it. Second time. Death. I think you're right, Nathan. I know I'm right. He's just said it in his statement. He's told us he's going to be measuring a globe. Oh, so it's automatically a globe then? Yet, yeah, like we always say, all they do is assume a sphere spherical surface and then move forward from there. So where do we go from here? We need... We? Need... we? What do you mean, we? Where do you go? <laughs> <laughs> we definitely need to... Fix... Where do you go? Have you understood now that yeah. the Earth being a sphere is just an assumption? Where do you go from here now that you have appreciated this? I appreciated it five years ago. So where do I go? I'm doing it. This is where I am. Where are you going to go, yeah, though? You're... Where are you going to go, given that this seems to be a bit of a revelation for you, the combative one in opposition? You know where he's going to come? I'm not in opposition. I've just said you're probably right. <laughs> I know I'm right. Do you mean I'm, I'm probably right? He's just said we're going to be measuring a globe. By declaration, that is fact. He is begging the question. That's not might be right. I think you might be right. No, I am. All right, you're right. Thank you. Yes. Now, you understand that just assuming a sphere doesn't prove it. Where are you going to go from here? Shit. You know, I will take NASA back 
budget and now we will make expedition and me and Nathan will explore all the exactly. world. You know? That's what you should do. There are really cheap and yeah. easy Why are you things- telling me what I should do? Six times I've asked you where you go. I'm here. I've gone there. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt five years ago. You, on the other hand, we're asking you where you go. Not what I will do based on your declaration about what you think I should do now. I said, what should we do? Not Not we. I pointed that out too. There is no we here. There's me very much solid on my own, alone, without you. Yeah, who's this we? I think I'm a flat earther now, mate. (laughs) You're a flat earther now. Uh, yeah. Me, so, me. what should I do? What should I do to... You should accept the vicious ridicule that you will now receive for that declaration. That's what you'll do. Accept that all of the people who previously stood by your side will now rip you a new asshole. That's what you can accept. That's what you can look forward to. Better grow a thick set of skin because you'll need it, mate. What? What's going to happen? You're going to get ripped a new asshole by your brethren. The people who formerly stood by your side have now heard you declare that you're a flat earther and concede several points on the show. So be prepared to have your limbs ripped off by your former friends. So I'll have two assholes and no limbs. Correct. But anyway, so there there are a few simple things we can do to, to... Not we, you. Have you accepted now that all the people around you, now you've declared your understanding and appreciation of the obvious and observable flat nature of our reality and the declarations you've given, rather than rebuttals and obfuscations, which is what you should be doing, you're going to get ripped to pieces by your own side now. And I want to know how you feel about that. Is it reasonable that based on your understanding that second law of thermodynamics applies to the Earth, gas would fill the sky vacuum, we don't have any curvature, we're not spinning... All those things that you've declared and said, no, I don't, I'm not a glober. That means you're now open to abject ridicule from your own friends who were previously by your side. Well, they're obviously not your friends, Nathan. If no shit. Yeah, these people, they're not friendly. <laughs> they're vicious. You said your friends. Yeah, former friends. Perceived friends, people who stood by your side, your brethren, the people who would say, like you have said, Earth's a sphere and be combative and obfuscation tactics being employed in the same way you have used them won't be used on your side. They'll be used against you now. It's quite a good filter for friends. then, Because like Neil, I disagree with a lot of what Neil says, but I like him. I think I'd be his friend in real life. So it's probably a good thing this has happened to you. It calls all those sort of hangers on and people who aren't really a friend, Nathan. I think this is a good session for you today. We'll get it all out in the open. We'll have a therapy session and we'll, we'll I don't know, we'll come to... I don't need therapy, you fucking idiot. Do you think I need you to give me therapeutic help in regards to my relationship with my friends? No, I'm okay, mate. <laughs> But your situation's going to drastically change. Mine will stay exactly as it is once the show finishes. Quite thick skin, Nathan. I'll be all right. Oh, right. Will you? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you'll definitely need that. You're not being truthful anyway. You're playing games. No, I'm not, Neil. I'm not. Welcome to Flat Earth. Thanks. It wasn't a very warm welcome, Nathan, I'll have to say. <laughs> because of your past. Yeah, it's because it's not a club. It's 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 a kind of disingenuous welcome because it's not a club. There's no us. I'm sorry that you had a flat reception. <laughs> welcome to the, the the realization of your own reality. How's that fit you? Better? It wasn't flat. It was very very coarse and bumpy. <laughs> the welcome. <laughs> I, I could understand that when you got no limbs. <laughs> Well, it's all fun and games and two now. Two assholes. It's all fun and yeah. games now. <laughs> so two assholes and no friends, right? No limbs. I, I have plenty of friends. I don't think I'll have any now, though. Is it reasonable? Anyway, let's That's get my... back to our therapy session. Well, not what our therapy session. Do I don't now, need therapy. Back, back, <laughs> back, back to my As question. As a flat earth community, what do we do now? We've been Can banging on think... about the black swan for it feels like 10 years now. Don't associate yourself with what? us and our arguments. 
suddenly because your declaration of the obvious and observable nature of reality doesn't mean suddenly you're part of this little clique that you think we've got here. We haven't got a little clique. You're not part of it if we did. <laughs> we don't welcome you into the community. I hope you receive the ridicule I've received for the last five years. I hope it really hurts. Well, if it's anything like what you said, it's going to flip and hurt, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it'll be horrible. <laughs> Me, I've got a very thick skin now and I've dealt with it and don't care. <laughs> five years down the line, it's Nathan, can I say back. something to Vacuum? Go ahead, go ahead. Listen, Vacuum, now you are flat earth. Uh, Nathan has a show. You need now to go outside to make flyers, to say people that it's flat earth. Now it's on you, not on Nathan. Nathan no. is doing this for years. You, you know? don't have to do anything. And and you don't have to do. make flyers, do you? You need to do science now and prove it stop telling us what we need to do you can do whatever you like and i will do the same there is no we and there won't be any you should be doing this by using the word we okay what are you Me, gonna do what should i do yeah good question good question what are you gonna do now the earth is flat obviously and observably always was nothing's changed but the I might send a weather balloon up. Oh, I'll look forward to that Ooh. video. Shout out to Cleary for the What I'm cat. saying is, why don't more people do simple experiments like that? For Ask flat yourself earth? that Instead question. Do it all for every time you point a finger at someone else not doing something, there's four fingers pointing back at you, right? I'm going to yeah. do it. Oh, well, I've done it, Nathan. I've sent weather balloons up. Oh, really? That's fascinating. Can we see the footage? Well, it, it, it's all part of my undergrad, so I'll have to get permission for that. I'd love to see the footage. Yeah, you, it's amazing. You can I actually bet. measure whether there's curve or not. It's amazing. Yeah, back when I first found out this, I wanted to send a weather balloon up. And if you'd already done one, or if I'd already done one, I'd want to be digging that out too. So now we're getting closer well, what to what I'm you'll be doing. It's dead easy and it's not expensive. Yeah, now we're all into what you'll be doing. It's much more interesting than you telling us what we should be doing, isn't it? What you'll be doing in the future, hopefully publishing your undergrad video of this balloon flight. Well, it's not you know the reason. It's not vacuum. just mine. That's uh, the vacuum. problem, Nathan. Vacuum, pipe up for a minute. Uh, you can pipe up, that means speak. To, you can pipe, either send the pipe weather down, balloon, I think you mean. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's just got you on a, 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 <laughs> he's got you on a bit of word salad. You mean pipe down? Please. Yeah, just pipe down, please, just for a minute. You've been rolling here for a little bit. So you said well, you sent the weather to, balloon. To believe. You tell me to pipe up, oh. and then you're mad when I start speaking. It, it wants to take this victory and drag it out for a few minutes, 10th. It's a minor victory over a figure of got me, Nathan. Go. You've got me peg, Nathan, you. Oh, God. Go ahead, 10th. Let's see if you can do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, cyclone vacuum. Listen, uh, you don't have to do a weather balloon to see if there's a curve or not all you got to do is the black swan which is at a one foot observer height the geometric physical horizon can be no further than 1.22 miles times the square root of the observer height that's all you got to do but the problem with that 10th one even if well I, okay let, i accept the black swan but the problem is it's so easily debunkable in the eyes of these ballers because it's a one in a thousand occurrence in who cares what the in the eyes of the ballers there you are again so what you're going to become a flat earth evangelist like spurs you're going to make sure they know how to think correctly Is that your job now well, i sort of straightening them if, out if spurs is being genuine well i don't know if he was because I, like, I don't know him very well but at least he's sort of trying to figure out what's actually going on instead of spouting black swan all the time yeah yeah but what are you gonna do you don't have to spout black swan all the time. And if you think that it's easily debunkable in the eyes of your former brethren who will now attack you viciously, then maybe you should go out and set them straight. Because we only need one black swan. That's why it's called the black swan. Look at the Karl Popper analogy. You only need one black swan to disprove the notion that all swans are white. And the notion that we have a geometric sphere edge for a horizon is debunked if you show once that it's beyond the geometric capabilities, that's why we get the concession we do, because it's a fact. So you can't get around the fact that you only need one to have the concession that we don't see a geometric horizon when it's the basis of their religion. Now, if you think that in their mind, their hand wa waving and poo-pooing of that is debunking it in their mind, well, don't worry about it, mate. Worry about what you're going to do and the ridicule you're going to get now. I'd worry about that.
the problem with the black swan analogy is there are still white like the black swan analogy doesn't debunk white swans nobody's suggesting with the Karl popper analogy that they're debunking the notion that there is an existence of white swans you clearly just don't understand the logical consistency or the Karl popper analogy because by presenting a black swan, you think that the claimant is saying, there are no white swans, here's a black one, you complete clown. But if no. you translate it to the... No! End- the fact that you can still assert that the sphere edge, sphere edge horizon is the horizon we see is just people with their head in the sand. doesn't mean that people won't still assert we've got a sphere edge for a horizon, but you can't have it be geometric one day and non-physical the next that's a violation of the law of contradiction. Unlike black and white swans, which quite happily can coexist, geometric, physical, and non-physical, non-geometric horizons cannot coexist. Doesn't help the cause. Why are you talking Terrible through analogy. me? It doesn't is help it, the cause. Guys in Discord, did you talk through every word I just said? Yep. But, yep. Get the fuck no, out. I no, Get the fuck no. out. You're just here to rump us when it comes to an interesting, juicy point. So now we're on to the meat and bones of what debunks your globe religion. You're not a flat earther. You're still here to obfuscate the black swan, which you said is easily poo-pooed. So that's the bit that you need to come through here. It being easily poo-pooed. No, it isn't. It's easily hand-waved by morons who don't understand the analogy and think that by saying, oh, well, we've only got one, that means that, well, like with black and white swans, it doesn't mean we haven't got geometric sphere edge horizons on other days. No. No. That violates the law of non-contradiction. You cannot be non-physical and physical simultaneously. Therein lies the debunking of the globe model. It's not easily hand-waved and poo-pooed and talked through by an asshole claiming to be a flat earther so he can obfuscate this point. This point is the death of the globe. You need a physical geometric sphere edge for your horizon. You used to call it Earth Curve. I'm not going to have some asshole pretend to be on my side and then talk through this demolishment of your religious faith in a globe. You can just get out, asshole. And what's funny is it, the geometric horizon did disappear. It's no, no longer being brought up and it's now an apparent horizon has always been. Well, you can't block things, yeah. though. The problem with that is you can't block stuff with an apparent horizon. A not actual horizon doesn't block anything. Yet they're claiming physical obstruction that they call Earth curve to prove Earth's a sphere. Well, if it's apparent, meaning not actual, it ain't blocking Jack. Welcome to perspective, the hijacking yep. of it. So the white swan did go away, in a way. In the you analogy a- that Karl Popper uses, you can still simultaneously have black and white swans. The assertion in his analogy, the specific black swan analogy by Karl Popper, is to disprove non-existence of black swans, i.e. the assertion from the claimant on the opposing side is all, all, without exception, swans are white. Now, if you present a black swan, you disprove that claim. Now, the claim in this respect to the heliocentric model is that we have a sphere edge for a horizon, calculable in their Earth curve mathematics. And what are they calculating? What are they calling Earth curve in this mathematics? Well, the physical obstruction provided to them, or claimed to be provided to them, in a picture at the horizon. So that is Earth curve, the physical geometric sphere edge formerly known as Earth Curve, is debunked by the black swan. You can't have it both ways. It's not, oh, it's only an apparent, not actual position, not physical today, but tomorrow it will be physically blocking boats and buildings. That violates the law of non-contradiction. Now, in terms of the details and intricacies of the actual example when you formulate modus tollens, you've got parameters. Can be no more than because in their world of physical sphere edge horizons, geometric also being apparent, because it's varied by height, but it's still physical. Now, if you've got fog, you can obscure that so it could be closer, but it can be no more than for it to be physical geometric. And once, only once required, you've demonstrated that it's beyond those parameters, it cannot be physical. Hence, we're told it's apparent until it suits them to be physical again. Uh, uh, uh. Law of non-contradiction violation. 
But how does that work if they've already told us we've never seen the geometric horizon? Impossible to see because we have an atmosphere. It means we do not see a physical geometric horizon. And it's required to assert we've got physical obstruction by way of assumed physical geometry. You need geometric horizons to do physical geometry. And if you're saying we can't see it, we can't measure it, it only exists in the maths, they're basically telling you, your world is a mathematical reification, we don't live on a globe. But you can assume the horizon's a physical edge, if you like. It's not. That only exists in maths. Like I said, it's a Jedi trick and it's a thought experiment. It's not real. Yeah, the whole idea of being on a globe is merely philosophy. We're not standing on a globe. The Earth's obviously and observably flat. But if you want to believe that the horizon's a physical sphere edge and the Earth's a sphere spinning around through a vacuum, then come here and watch us debunk it. And then watch people who are disingenuous liars who claim to be flat earthers so they can rump us this point and talk through it when it comes to the meat and bones of how the Earth is not a sphere, how the Earth is flat. You need to talk through that crap. Yeah, be disingenuous. Absolutely correct. The word used by Neil was accurate. To claim you're a flat earther so you can rump us the points that demolish your religion, that's disingenuous. They take uh, the effects of perspective and spin it around to say we live on a sphere. When, if we did live on the sphere, as you have pointed out, the geometric horizon must be at that location to match the 3,959 radius, as they claim. It's physical. You c so it, there's no way but, around but, the black hole. Hold on, on Tom. To, to fix that, they could very easily just take that radius that they don't have in the first place put in an equation to change it in order to salvage the radius that they didn't have in the first place. Well, Isn't that great? Have, yes, but we do have a, a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. We do have a problem when you do that because then all of their other calculations must be redone. Nah, shh. Don't worry about that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it can't so be done. You think, that, you think they could offer up a, a 10-mile horizon and not uh, stand behind the 264,000-mile radius now? All along, it's been three, under 4,000? Listen, 3959, 264,000, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, okay. They just forgot to carry the one somewhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great day to be a flat earther. <laughs> we're, t we're talking about maths, Indeed. though. Making it work in maths... It's irrelevant. It's not reality. It's abstract. Getting those numbers to work. If somebody comes along at some point and mathematically figures out how they can justify a sphere edge physical horizon to be still asserted as such and justify a radius value that puts the outer edge of the equator further than the current heliocentric trajectory of the moon in its presupposed orbit. If you can justify that mathematically, so what? It's <laughs> meaningless nonsense. doesn't affect the world we actually live in. It's not physics, that's maths. Well, that's why Andrew Thomas Young uses the word numerically versus actually. Exactly. Precisely. Not physically. We talked about this with Arwin. We were both in uh, Bible Literalists chat last night. And Arwin was asking how something, I can't remember the word he used, but it had the word work in the word. I'm like, that's a very interesting word. We talked about that on Friday, I believe. But work is a, a word that's been hijacked. So when you use the word work, it has lots of different meanings, depending on the context. And if you say the maths works, as a perfect example, the implication in your mind is that it's physically doing something. Work could mean graft. Me picking something up and putting it somewhere else is work. Work done. That's the implication. So if the maths works, does that mean it can be reified into an actual physical working of something that's occurred? No. It's a qualification. It may be a description. It may even be an accurate description of something that's occurred. But the maths isn't the physicality. So the maths working gives you a reason to justify it and reify it into existence? No, it doesn't. 
but it's an interesting word that's used to make you feel like you can. The maths works. Well, what does that mean? It works, functions, in the abstract. Doesn't mean anything in reality. Even if it's an accurate description of something that actually occurs in reality, it's still abstract. Maths is not reality. Shout out to Good Servant. Also, shout out to Cleary. I did chat you out earlier, but schedule his walk of atonement. He says, prior to the disingenuous actual reveal of his intentions to rumpus the living shit out of anything that's meaningful. Thanks for the super chat, both of you. Really appreciate your support. Interesting that he harks on and on about being disingenuous and how he objects to that term, only to reveal how just how disingenuous he really is right at the end. Yep, that's his calling card, I think. Not only his calling card, his defence against the ridicule he won't get because he'll get a pat on the back now from his brethren. Yeah, you were having them on, weren't you? Yeah, we don't need to ridicule you because you're not really a flat earther. You said you understood all the arguments, but we know you didn't mean it. And they'll lie to themselves, lie to him as they put their arms around him and understand that when he conceded the second law of thermodynamics does apply... That it doesn't really, because our belief in a globe doesn't have it apply. Shout out to Retro, retro Bill. Si silence is the best reply to a fool. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Wouldn't be much of a show. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, though. <laughs> maybe he was sharing his pain and trying to figure out what to do now that he thinks he's a flat earther. Is that what I heard? It's, a ta it's called a tacit acceptance. So he's accepting it at a surface level. Well, cognitively, it means he's processed it in order to be able to do that. Well, yeah, that's going to leave you in pain, even though he's doing it in a surface way that he can relinquish at a later date very easily based on his behaviour. He also has to have cognitively processed that now, doesn't he, Chocolate? Yep. <laughs> Ch Chocolate, you came a little late. At the beginning of the show, he wanted to get rid of the cars and have everyone go to bicycles. That's when he lost me. What? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Is he one of those people that feel like now we have to go back from the very, very beginning because he realized that Earth is flat? Is that one of those yeah, things? He, he wanted, oh, we got to throw out everything we know. No, he wanted to use it as a segue to either do what he did, which is just rumpus the crap out of any points because he might get away with it based on the fact that he said, oh, I'm a flat earther now, so you'll have to tolerate everything I do because uh, we're on the same side now. Or use it as an opportunity to dictate to us what we should be doing. I'm on your side now. What are we going to do? Meaning, what are you going to do? That's what he's asking us. What are you going to do next? So when we put it on him, what he's going to do, even though he hasn't planned for that, he's suddenly got to make a few concessions. Well, they're going to be leaving him in pain cognitively, even though he's not going to get his arms and legs ripped off by his own side because he can just declare, oh, no, I was just messing him around. He, he reminds Aww. me of that character in the Hobbit movie, the one where uh, Smog, Smog, the dragon, gets he's flying over the city and he's you know torching the city and the king's the 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 phony king of that little city. He's got that guy that speaks for him. You know who I'm talking about? No. Yeah. Anyway, so this guy who speaks for the king and the the dragon falls and kills the king. So now he's washed the shore. So now the new guy that who shot the the dragon, he's now, you know, talking for him. Like, this is our new king. And he's hes almost like, he. well, not almost. He plays both sides. That's this guy right here. Right. And he's got his motivation. You know, he's got his little plan in terms of what he wants to do and where he wants to go. Good games. That's all they've got now. Games. Let's get him talking about some nonsense, some individual, rather than talking about the subject. If we can lead him off into the weeds of nonsense. He's making that beeping noise in Discord. If we can lead him off in the weeds of nonsense, we won't be talking about how the Earth is obviously and observably flat. How we don't have a sky vacuum. How the Earth doesn't demonstrate any Coriolis effect, as is claimed to be the case to prove it spins. How we don't have any Earth curve. We don't have a geometric horizon. The Earth curve obstruction, they claim is only in existence in the mathematics. All of these things are the details that don't need discussing. And someone like him, he doesn't want to hear it. Clearly. 
Well, he's heard it. He doesn't want to accept it. He's not serious about digging in and verifying his uh, his side against what is verified here. I mean, it's so simple. Yeah. All we've got in defense in the last few months is tactics. Tactics to take the subject away from the devastation of the globe religion. That's it. That's all we're getting. Tactics. No arguments. No proof of the globe. It's a funny thing uh, when they bring up refraction nowadays. Before, we used to say refraction to explain things. Now, they're betting on refraction uh, so they can use it to beat the black swan. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but they're trapped in a corner of using their refraction, which is based on our... Exactly. <laughs> Oh, but even even uh -oh. that, even that refraction is a real thing, and uh, it's not physical. Whereas your globe must be physical to block things from the bottom up, and this is what you've told us all along. And all you got to do is go lower to the ground, and that distance uh, gets shorter and shorter because that Earth curve on the curve. I mean, if the ball is a curve, that curve is going to show up sooner. Versus later uh, in your observation, if you're much lower to the ground. So these surfing photographers who are floating in the water have taken some tremendous long distance shots on clear, undisturbed days on the water. And they're like, the lens That's, is on the water. It's strong, aggressive refraction. <laughs> yeah. You call it whatever yeah, they it's like. All it. game over. In terms of their qualification of actual atmospheric conditions, they'll normally. The, the fundies that do a good job of arguing for the globe will do a reasonable job of asserting how actual atmospheric conditions occur. But at some point, they will do a bait and switch. Bait being you thinking they know all about refraction, switch being changing that to a mathematical construct of 7 over 6 of the R value that cannot be seen, cannot be measured, only exists in the maths. And light's going to bend at the rate of that R value or whatever derivative they apply to it. Standard refraction would be 7 over 6 R. And this refraction based on R is called terrestrial refraction that's the only refraction in their toolbox because their maths for a geometric assertion that earth's a sphere requires an r value for the refraction and an r value to give them a geometric horizon that does not exist it's merely a verification it's merely maths and it's every single step of the way that they can take you away from the physical actual into the abstract of their globe belief that's all it is we're not on a globe the maths might suggest it but it's been debunked we don't have a geometric horizon for the maths. We don't have an Earth curve. So it's just weird that whenever they want to show a different picture with a horizon that eh, maybe sort of clo closely matches their, their, their model, their, their mathematics, um, it, what, what horizon are we looking at there? blocking boats and buildings ipso facto they're asserting it's a physical geometric sphere edge edge horizon their edge coincidentally the thing that flat earthers get challenged to prove on a model we don't assert here where's your edge flat earther oh right like the one that you think the horizon is that you've got boats and buildings blocked by by but and we're simultaneously told only exists in maths and cannot be measured or seen that one chocolate because that's always confusing to me. We show you the black swan and you say, oh, we don't see the geometric horizon. But look at this picture. Okay, what are we looking at in this picture? The geometric horizon that we, you just told us we don't see ever? <laughs> like, did yeah. you work that out? That's exactly what the, <laughs> that's what the vacuum guy wanted to do. Well, the Karl Popper analogy doesn't leave you without any white swans, meaning, well, I can still assert that the horizon's a physical sphere edge on another day with a different picture when it suits me. That's what he wants to do. That's what they want to do. Let's forget about the black swan. Forget the fact that we need a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon to do this geometry, to assert that this building's being blocked by Earth curve. That would be a physical geometric sphere edge horizon. Because we don't want to accept the fact that it's been debunked as having physicality by the black swan, only required to be done once, 
to receive full concession from the other side on the globe side of this argument that we don't see a geometric sphere edge horizon. That would be Earth curve. We don't see Earth curve. That's the concession we've had from the black swan. Game over. End of globe assertion. Yes. Welcome to Flat Earth. Well, they can never say it can't be measured if they insist on the radius of 3959. All you got to do is go uh, to the observer height and they tell us where it's going to be. So they say it's measurable. They just it, say it exactly. can't be seen. Exactly. They say we cannot see. We wouldn't expect to see the geometric horizon. It only exists in the maths. However, here's an Earth curve calculator. Aren't we wonderful? We can make predictions about how closely physical reality will match with our reification of a physical geometric sphere edge existing in this maths marked with an X and labelled horizon. But it doesn't exist. We can't see it. But look how much we can see it in this maths called Earth Curve Maths, telling you how much the horizon's getting in the way of stuff. Oh, but we can't see it. Can't measure it. But here's the maths. And then they'll say, at this point, as we've said, but it's worth mentioning, well, if you had no atmosphere, right, begging the question again, then you would see it, except their light bending is based on 7 over 6 R, so they're already assuming the R. Exactly. We've already got an R value, and the uh, linchpin in the argument, their flaw in their story, is Al Biruni. Can't see it, doesn't exist, only exists in Matthew. Al Baruni measured it to give them the derivative R value. And from there on in, every other example, like the one given earlier by Unbelievable Productions, is to assume the Earth's a sphere and then say that they're going to move forward measuring an assumed sphere. So yeah, if you assume. The atmosphere is what's causing refraction. Would it? Uh, you hate and switch. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, if... No. Depends. Yeah. On, no, in their maths, seven over six R. In reality, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. I'm. I'm on the really is level. Um. <laughs> so on the really is level, you have atmosphere, and they're saying this atmosphere is the reason that we're seeing, uh, this horizon, past nine miles, right? But if we didn't have the atmosphere, we would see the horizon at 1.2 miles so the same thing that's that causes refraction right that's distorting cranes and all this other shit is giving us clear visibility but if you were to remove that we would just see 1.2 miles away yeah it's not that make you can't, you any can't. sense to anybody it doesn't because you can't you can't have it work both ways chocolate eloquently put maybe if you summarize that in terms of why it doesn't work rather than me doing it. Well, I mean, to me, it's just simple, especially when I hear things like, oh, you look at the cranes, they're all bendy because of all the refraction. All right, so you're saying that the refraction that we have is distorting those cranes, but at the same time giving us clear visibility to a horizon that's further than nine miles away when it should be at 1.2 miles away. Exactly. It should be a physical obstruction in the near foreground, a wall of Earth in its physicality getting in the way. And yet the refractions moving that position, which should be blocking our view, to behind something that should be blocked by it, it makes absolutely no sense. In reality, all they'll do is go to the maths and use 7 over 6 hour and invent new horizons, a geometric horizon that doesn't exist, to base a horizon that does exist on in mathematics. Yeah, because I think it would work the op complete opposite. If you were to remove the atmosphere uh, contradiction that's causing this refraction, you would see further. <laughs> but they think you're going to see closer. Yeah, it's a contradiction between their assertion that we would see all the way to New York from England, it, unless there was an our argument on our side. Well, atmospheric conditions obscure your view and angular limitations obscure your view. But they draw it in Muppet vision without atmosphere and draw a line between the two and say, look, if you remove Earth curve, the only thing that stops you from seeing it, then you would see New York from England. Well, it's like, well, that's under the assumption that you've got no atmosphere because that's how your Muppet vision geometry works. And when you remove the assumption of R and everything 
else which was formerly ignored is still ignored, you end up with no horizon at all because you're looking at the world through this side view, Muppet Vision, with you on the left side of the page, target on the right, and a line between the two items. And you can draw whatever value you like on the items. It's completely irrelevant of anything that goes on optically. It's geometric. Side view, orthographic view. We call it Muppet Vision, where you see the side of your own head. So that automatically assumes that you've got physical geometry blocking your view. So for them to then say, right, the physical geometry and the R value that's derivative for that geometry is going to bend the light to make you see further when you've got more of the optical effect that would actually reduce your view. It's total ass about face backwards nonsense. Correct, Chocolate? <laughs> exactly. Yep. There's a couple of good uh, Flat Earth Proof videos come out over the weekend. So there's one, uh, both were released by Taboo Conspiracy in terms of their edited form, although he wasn't the producer of the material in both instances. But a big shout out to Ben, Taboo Conspiracy 2 is the name of his channel. I'll just say that again without stuttering. Taboo Conspiracy 2 is the name of his channel. So go and check out his two most recent videos. The first was a, a laser test over a lake where both parties are a couple of feet, if that, above the water um should be hundreds of feet obscuring the laser from reaching the camera also a black swan the horizon the physical geometric sphere edge horizon should be at about three miles and it's way beyond where it should be anyway moving on the second one was uh, an f-16 pilot who although remained anonymous gave details in terms of how the operation of his vehicle would dictate that the earth is flat it couldn't work without it being flat in terms of where he's looking out scanning the area in front of him and then calculating how much above or below his position an enemy craft would be in his scan well if that's based on that person actually being around a contoured sphere earth they'd never be able to actually pinpoint them with the scan and then target them to fly to them to intercept them in other words it must be flat for it to work. Yeah, I saw that. That was good. Loads of people have mirrored it and more power to them because in quick succession, you've got two. One that's showing physically how Earth cannot possibly be a sphere and the other showing how in terms of an actual mechanical operation of something, something that's functioning in the air, how it cannot be a sphere. Both within a day of each other, you're like, "Wow, this is a good good weekend, flat Earth." Wow, look at all these look at all these people mirroring it. Good on you. Yeah, why why not? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, the people mirroring it are like, it's just shoving it in people's faces, isn't it? Good. Earth's flat. Well, it's a beautiful thing, right? I mean, <laughs> how many times we get told, uh, pilots think it's flat. Uh. <laughs> they're, they're correcting. My sister told me that uh, not long ago. You know, how, how, I know a pilot who corrects for curvature. <laughs> you know, it's like it's one of those things and she won't question her because she's a pilot. So it's like there's no questioning there. But then you have somebody like this who's an F-16 pilot who comes out and says, look, my plane wouldn't even work if it was a ball. <laughs> like, this is a beautiful thing, man. That's it. At an unconscious level, people like him and his counterparts are going to know it's flat. It's not going to get discussed. But they know at an unconscious level, at the very least, it's flat. Ah, oh, come on, Chocolate. Are, are you certain that uh, jet aircraft don't have circumdicular uh, geometrical compensators for the R-based presumption of the Earth? There's no mechanism for that? Is, th is that a button you hit? Is that like turbo boost? No. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, I'll, no, I'll give Arwin. That's always working. <laughs> no, no, always I'll give Arwin. To constantly correct the course for the presumption of R, which is very easy. It just says that it does that, and then it <laughs> it's the R button. <laughs> yeah, there is. I'll give Arwin it. You don't need any explanation, Arwin. Just get a pen, write down these two words. Next time this conversation comes up, just say these two words, and then you close don't your understand. Mic. Huh? Say again. You don't understand? No, no, no. That's three words. <laughs> <laughs> no, two words. 
pendulous veins. No, but that has been literally disproven. We that, sh that. Sh Just say <laughs> pendulous veins and then close your mic. I'm trying to... I gave you the P waves and S waves. Did it work? No. Just, <laughs> just play along. Be the baller. I'm not just playing say, a baller, damn it. Just say pendulous <laughs> veins. That's all you've got to do. And then go ahead, chocolate. Oh, wait. Maybe if it's the pendulous veins without the gyroscope, then it would make more sense. Too many words. <laughs> so without the gyroscope, just, just the veins. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. Just say pendulous veins. Right. For sudden corner turns, know that unexpected centri centripetal forces that are applying to the gyroscope, and then the pendulous veins prevent it from offsetting its orientation from the added on forces. So, but the thing is, that's for abrupt turns, for heavy maneuvering, you know, loops and shit. But the R based presumed turn that planes would have to fly over a globe, that's not an abrupt turn. That's absolutely constant at all times. So, how could that mechanically do that? Pendulous veins. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, you don't understand. But they only work for sudden extreme forces shifts, which does not happen with the presupposed centripetal force that would be a natural but, consequences of but we already know it's a globe so yeah you don't understand perfect natural perfect consequences so check it out man i got my own wingman now see you should have been the baller Arwin. i've got my own wingman you don't understand pendulous veins yeah if the earth is a sphere we'll see we'll have pendulous veins on planes <laughs> we have pendulous veins on planes so earth is a sphere See, all we need to do is affirm the consequent Arwin. It's perfectly acceptable to beg the question, if the Earth is a sphere, we will have planes tracking around said sphere with pendulous veins being the reason for that tracking. And obviously we do have these planes tracking around a sphere that I've presupposed with pendulous veins being the reason. Therefore, Earth is a sphere, Arwin. Uh. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think the ball is getting to you. Your level's going down. No, I think you don't understand. Shout out to our junkie, says <laughs> Chuck Norris. Earth is flat. Hashtag, I can't read all those letters all at once. <laughs> Can someone else read his hashtag? <laughs> hashtag uh, roundhouse what? kick the globe. Roundhouse kick the globe. <laughs> hashtag roundhouse kick the globe. Not the most memorable hashtag, but thank you very much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Of course, because he says Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris, Earth is flat. <laughs> Chuck Norris is so hard that if he punched the ground, Earth would actually start spinning. <laughs> Are you saying it just needs a kickstart? Boom, boom! <laughs> so, Chuck Norris caused the globe to spin, is that it? No, he would, though, if he punched the ground. Kick? Anyway, with this chocolateless nonsense, I will say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley or Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering streams, then stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Of course, a massive thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Video.